Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. It is 9.04 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this 8th day of March 2021. Happy Monday. I want to focus on the pound this week. Specifically, I want us to take a quick look here at the pound Swiss. It's not exactly one of the most popular pairs in the world to trade. Um, it's one of my favorites, though. And look at the weekly chart. And look at the RSI. Now, extremes in the RSI do not always mean that you're going to have a broad reversal, okay? Just because something's hit 70, 80, or 90 does not mean it's going to sell off, and just because something's hit 30, 20, or 10 doesn't mean it's going to rally. Um, those kinds of things are um, not true in, in uh, the stock market, but in currency markets on weekly charts, that is... That is more likely to happen because currency markets are so range bound and because the RSI was was designed to be used in a ranging market. We often do see the overbought and oversold sold levels in the RSI work very well as counter trend trades on weekly charts and currency markets. I want you to look at the level of the pound Swiss, though. Probably can't see the number, but the RSI level on the pound Swiss just a little bit ago was at 75.5. And when was the last time it was that big? We have to go back a ways. In fact, on Oanda's data, this goes back to 2002. It has never been that high. So we have to look at historical data. So now looks at the pound Swiss at 75.67 on the IDC data. If I scroll out, this is on the weekly chart. When was the last time the RSI was this high? <laughs> 1997. What month? This month of 1997. Okay. That is, that is pretty massive. That's pretty wild. The composite index. It's level on the weekly chart. The black line here, the last time it was trading up here was back in November of 1996. Okay, that's pretty wild. That is pretty wild. Now let's kind of take a peek at what this setup means. I'm currently short on the pound Swiss. I mean, short on it last Friday, every 20 pips or so, adding to the short. This thing's going to collapse, and it's going to collapse pretty hard. Here's the other, other thing to look at with the pound Swiss, is that the amount of time it has spent in an uptrend, this is, this is, this is staggering. And you have to go back to the... I don't think actually this has ever occurred this many times. No, this is... I think we're looking at, you know, historical kind of length of time here. Look at the volume bars on the weekly chart, okay? Let's just go back to the first of the year. That was the last time, the, the, the week of January 4th was the last time we had a weekly close below its open. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If it, nothing else changes, we are going into our ninth consecutive week of a close above the weekly open. All right. If we go from the close of January 4th's weekly candle to where we are now, we have had almost a thousand pip move in less, in a little, little, little over three months time. Okay, that's, that's pretty wild. And this kind of a move is not sustainable. This is straight up parabolic. There is a massive gap in between the close and the Tenkinsen. Never mind the close between the, the Kijinsen and, and the current close. This gap will not hold. I mean, I'm honestly surprised it's lasted this long. Um, it's, it's pretty mind-boggling how, how, how wide this gap is. But 
if you're looking and what's really nice about this is this is a very, very low risk trade in and it's not even a gap where you have to look at, you know, shorting and waiting for it to come down to the Kidensen. When things come back to the Tenkensen at this kind of range that it's stretched out at, the, the move is violent. It's fast. It is rapid. And we're talking about like a 500 pip move over a very short period of time. This is a awesome setup. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome setup. All right. Now, let's look at the pound dollar on the weekly chart. Let's see what we've got going on here. Um, pound dollar has come down to its the Tankinson. It's struggling to get above the weekly Tankinson. And we had a, a, another week lower. It looks like we're just going to continue that move here. Uh, the pers the uh, composite index crossed below both of its averages. The percent B is crossed back down lower. The pound dollar looks like it's going to be under pressure. And then the pound yen, very much the same thing we had going on with uh, the pound Swiss, is we have these this massive same amount of time uh, stretched drive higher. I didn't even look at the weekly chart here for the position and let's look at the historical data though because i have a feeling we're going to see the same thing um gvp jpy and let's just put a horizontal line on that rsi kind of eyeballing it 2014 actually was the last time we saw the rsi at this level 2014 the composite index, that one was a little earlier, 2016. So the yen, the pound yen, has had um, its extremes uh, found within the last 10 years. But the amount of time that it has spent and the gap that exists between the tank and cent is this, it's, it's the same scenario as the pound Swiss. This is way overdone. This is into la 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 stupid land, and it represents, I think, one of the best short opportunities that we'll see until probably the middle of the year. Um, that does it for me, folks. Y'all have a good rest of your trade day. Take care of yourselves, and we will have some more pound trades tomorrow.